Morning guys, welcome back to the Knitting Expert Podcast. This is episode 146, part two, the spinning segment. My name is Mina and welcome back. Um, if you have watched part one, then you might notice that my lighting and my clothing is a bit different. I'm actually recording this the day after. Um, I had planned on recording both on the same day, but um, it just didn't work out that way, which is fine. And uh, yeah, so today is Sunday the 3rd of November and I am here with you to do the spinning segment. I have a fair amount of fluff and things here to share with you, so I hope you enjoy this. Um, just trying to think, I did all my introductions in part one, but just in case you didn't watch that, uh, like I said, my name is Mina. You can find me online as Knitting Ex Expat on Instagram and Mina Philip on Ravelry. I design and sell my um, knitwear designs on Ravelry as Knitting Expat Designs and you can find links for all of that down below. Um, I don't typically do show notes for my spinning segments. Um, it's the same show notes that I have for the main podcast but if you have any questions about my spinning or anything like that then by all means um, let me know and I will be happy to answer them for you. Um, I'm trying to think what else was there that I wanted to tell you this morning. We have Hugo here, he's one of our two cats. And he always, well, I say always, a lot of the times he tends to come and join me when I am podcasting because I think he thinks that I'm a little bit crazy when I sit here talking to myself. Hey? Yeah? Um, my daughter Layla is at her grandparents' house today, this morning anyway. She had a sleepover last night. In a couple of weeks, my husband and I have a weekend where we have a lot of things going on in the evenings over a couple of nights. And so we've organized for his parents to have Layla that weekend. And um, I kind of wanted to have like a trial run, I guess, on a night where we didn't have any plans in case something went terribly wrong and we had to run over and like help them out or something. Uh, thankfully it was all fine. Obviously I didn't expect it to like go terribly wrong, but um, I don't think she's ever had a sleepover at Perry's parents, my husband's parents' house, where we weren't there to put her to sleep first, like put her down for bed first. So it was more just to make sure everything went smoothly and it was all fine and all of that sort of stuff, which thankfully it was. And I'll be going to pick her up later today. Um, but first, I'm here to record this video. Um, sorry if that ramble at the beginning was completely um, something you were not interested in hearing, <laughs> but there we go. Okay. So first off, let's remove this cat from the situation because this is distracting. Come on, stay there. Good boy. Um, okay, let's talk about some finished spins first. So I think these two were actually spins that I finished before I left for Rhinebeck or maybe soon after I came back. No, they weren't. I did these after I got back from Rhinebeck. Okay, so this one I started before leaving for Rhinebeck, but um, finished once I got back. So I spun this as a single ply, which you can see. Um, I can't tell you the fiber content because it's such a mishmash of different fibers. There's definitely some merino. I know there's some alpaca, I know there's some silk, I know there's some sparkle. There's like all sorts of craziness in this, in this um, skein. So this was spun from Rolex that I made with my daughter a few, there's a few videos back on this channel where you'll have seen me uh, making Rolex with uh, Layla and these were the, this was the fibre that came out of it. Um, I actually went back and made another round of Rolex um, using the same fibres that she did and I tried to copy the same order that she told me to do them in the first time. But um, yeah, so that's all of those spun together and I decided to keep it as a single ply just because I thought it was really quite pretty as a single and I was also worried with all the different colours and stuff in there that it would look really muddy if I tried to um, ply it. And I didn't want it to look muddy. But this has come out to be 75 grams and I got 348 yards or 318 metres and it's pretty consistent, well I'll say consistent, it's a pretty solid um, like light fingering to fingering weight. Yeah, which is quite cool. Um, and then the other one that I've spun is this beautiful braid or skein. And this is some fibre that I picked up at Fibre East from the Shepherd's Hut. It is a merino tensile blend and this is 99 grams and I got 295 yards or 269 metres. And the colourway was raincoat. This is really beautiful red, like tones of red and you get the lighter sheen from the 
tensile what's in there it's really beautiful and it's come out like a pretty solid dk weight to be honest pretty happy with that too i quite like my hand spun in like the sport dk range just because it feels quite substantial without being too thick that seems to be my default spin anyway for a two ply it seems to be like a dk sport weight ish um then another spin that i did recently was this skein i haven't labeled it yet but this was some gray corridor fiber that i dyed with um food coloring there we go words I, I dyed it as a gradient with food coloring and so i spun it as a gradient from end to end and then chain plied it and this is 104 grams and i got 182 yards or 167 meters of a chain ply so that's basically sorry hugo's making noise in the background so that's a pretty good like worsted iron weight what are you crying about anyway he's not happy perry perry left this morning for a work trip and so he's a little bit upset about that i think anyway so that's this yarn i'm not sure what it'll be but it'll probably be a pretty a pretty good hat i think um and then i spoke about this um did i speak about this no i didn't speak about this on the podcast obviously because this is for the spinning segment but i also spun these two skeins this is actually one braid of fibre that I split into two and this was for a spinning experiment that I've done a separate video for which will be coming out soon. Um, and this is some Superwash Polworth from um, Almas who is Witchcrafty Lady. And so the this skein here was spun much thicker and this skein on this side was spun much thinner. So the thickest, the idea was to show how the colours play differently um, depending on how thick you spin your yarn. It hasn't shown up quite the way I expected or as dr dramatically different as I'd expected. So, But with the thicker one, I think you can see that the colours is pop a little bit more individually compared to the thinner one where the colours tend to blend more together when you're looking at it from a distance. Up close, you can see all the individual colours. But the idea is that from a distance, the colours tend to blend and sort of meld together a bit more with the thinner yarn versus with the thicker yarn where the colours individually stand out a lot more and have a bit more of a pop. Anyway, so for the thicker skein, I have, I've got 54 grams and I got 86 yards or 79 metres. And for the thinner skein, I had 53 grams and I got 197 yards and 180 metres. So a lot finer, a lot more yardage than I did with the thicker um, yarn. But it was just a fun experiment and I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Um, and then another thing that I've been playing around with is I picked up a Turkish spindle for myself at Rhinebeck and it's, yeah, it's actually been really fun to spin with. I've really enjoyed spinning with it, surprisingly so. Like, I never really expect, I've never been a huge fan of, like, drop spindling. Like, I get, I now have learned how to do the drop spindle and I get the process and it's, it's fine, but it's really slow and I don't really, I don't personally enjoy it that much. I can do it and I'm still planning on doing a series of like how to spin on a drop spindle and I think it's a really great introduction to spinning. Um, it's a really great low cost introduction to spinning, learning on a drop spindle and it teaches you the basics. But I actually really enjoy spinning on this little Turkish spindle, which is really quite cute. And look at that, it looks so pretty on the bottom. I don't know why I'm having focusing issues today. There we go. And uh, this one is by True Creations. I didn't, they didn't have a booth. It was at another booth that I, at Rhinebeck and I can't remember the name, I'm sorry. But um, this is their midi size. So I think this is like a medium. Yeah, this is like a midi size. It is 20 grams or 0.7 ounces. And it's really cute. And I've spun two turtles with it so far. That's what the little um, things are called. Let me take them off the, off the spindle to these little turtles and they come off and they are basically a center pull ball that you can pull from the outside and the inside at the same time and so you can do a two ply quite easily from these so i have this bag of odds and ends from into the world that again i picked up at rhinebeck and i've been i paired them off in like twos that go well together like two of the odds and ends that match quite well together and then i've been stripping them down into thin strips 
just because it's easier to manage with the spindle and I've been alternating one strip from each little nugget so it sort of blends together a bit better. Got my little strips here and I've just been spinning them end to end onto the, the spindle and then once I get to the end, once I've spun all of these, I'll take it off and then I'll essentially at the end have a bunch of little mini skeins and each of these are around 15 to 20 grams in weight so I'll have a bunch of little mini skeins of hand spun at the end when I'm done which should be quite fun. So that's basically this project that I'm currently working on and this is a great sort of like um, end of the night I may be a little bit too tight to knit but I'm not quite tired enough yet we're still watching a tv show or something and I just want to do something with my hands but maybe not working on the wheel because maybe I'm in the middle of a bigger project or I'm about to start plying and I don't really want to do that right now or whatever this is a great sort of just pick up and work on for a few minutes kind of project and yeah so there's no definitive deadline for this one it's just nice to pick up and spin a little bit as and when I have some time for that um actually the first thing I spun on that little Turkish spindle was this little skein so I took some fiber from big old bag of fibre that I picked up from Luke at Weinberg and it's the Torrent colourway it's from her spontaneous or sort of like spinning clouds that she sells and this is just a little 15 gram sample I spun this on the Turkish spindle just to get a little idea of how that would be and um, yeah I'm really quite happy with it to be honest I'm really happy with how consistent it's turned out and the spin and the ply um, just were really nice to do um, and then going back to this torrent spinning cloud, I picked up two bags of these spinning clouds, one in the torrent and one in another colorway. Um, and you can see here there's some black, which is some mohair. And I've really been wanting to practice a bit more with my core spinning. So last night um, I sat down and I played around with some core spinning. So this is the result of that. Um, I only did a little bit, I think this is like 45 grams of core spun yarn. And yeah, it still has a bit of work to do, but this is my very, this is actually the most successful core spinning attempt I've ever had. Um, in the past when I've tried core spinning, it's always just come out really just bad, not good at all. So I'm actually really happy with how this has turned out. And I really want to experiment a bit more with core spinning. I think there's a lot of interesting techniques and um, fun ways to play with fiber and yarn that you can experiment with, with core spinning. And I did this on my bulky flyer on my uh, on my jumbo flyer on my spinning wheel on my Kromsky Sonata which is the main spinning wheel that I use and I got my bulky flyer from my parents as a birthday present this year so yeah I'm really happy with how this has turned out having the bulky or the jumbo flyer has made it really easy to a lot easier for me to do core spun than it was on my regular standard flyer because it goes a lot slower which is kind of what you need you don't want as much twist so it makes it a lot easier to do this and like even before um setting the twist or anything it's not it's not too crazy i mean yeah it spins a lot on itself but that's kind of the nature of course fun but it's not super it's not too bad and i'm really happy with how that's turned out um so yeah pretty tough with that to be honest Get this wound back up <laughs> I'm not the best at, best at skeining so um, and then my only other work in progress at the moment sorry so my plan is to keep of course spinning the rest of this to keep practicing with that and my only other work in progress is this beauty so this is all all spun up and I've tried to spin it as thin as I can but I'm not sure this is actually going to be thin enough uh, this is a superwash Polworth nylon blend that I hand dyed with some food coloring um, into like a mirror dye so uh, half the braid was dyed one way and the other half was dyed in like the reverse of it the idea being that I was going to spin this for matching socks so I want to I want to chain ply this to get some sock yarn but the thing is Polworth tends to puff up when it's washed after it's been spun and so even though this looks like it's going to be fine enough now I'm worried that once I wash and set it it's not going to be as thin as I would like it to be for socks. However, that shouldn't be a problem. I should still have enough yardage because I had 140 grams 
of this fibre that I've spun onto this bobbin, which is crazy because this is a four ounce bobbin and I'm amazed I managed to get 140 grams of fibre on there with room to spare. I'm actually going to apply this on my jumbo flyer because I'm worried I wouldn't be able to get the plied yarn all onto one bobbin and I don't want to break the yarn. So that's going to be my plan for today is to apply this and um and yeah fingers crossed i get a good sock yarn i don't mind if it's slightly thicker like a sport weight sock yarn that's fine too i just really really hope it doesn't come out like a dk weight once it's been washed i mean if it does it's not the end of the world i'll just do something else with it but it would be too thick for me to use for socks for what i had in mind but um but yeah so fingers crossed this works out okay um, and a question for those of you who are spinners and who have been spinning, spinning for longer than I have. I have now officially been spinning for a year. Um, what's your thoughts on using two-ply hand-spun yarn for socks? Um, I always just assumed that you had to use three-ply, but I also realised that I'm fairly inexperienced when it comes to spinning. And I know a lot of the time people with knitting talk about not using um a no nylon base for socks and like you would never knit socks out of 100 percent merino yarn but i've done that and it's been perfectly fine in the past i think it depends a lot on how you wear your socks and how harsh you are on your socks but i'm curious have any of you experimented with two ply um yarns for hand spun socks and what are your thoughts on that just curious just a little bit of information um market research I guess because I feel like it would be really fun to do like a fractal two ply and use that for a pair of socks I think it'd be really fun rather than trying to do a fractal three ply um and stuff like that anyway it was just a thought I had and I was just wondering what you um more experienced spinners or just in general if you've spun for socks before what your thoughts are on that um, I guess the only other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about was what you are interested in seeing from me next. So like I said, I've got a spinning vlog video that's coming out for spinning thick versus spin and like how that can have effects on colour. Although it didn't turn out quite how I had hoped it would, I think there's still some lessons to be learned from it. Um, it's still some of the principles hold true, it's just maybe not as drastic in this particular fibre. Um, I have a couple of other spinning plans coming up and I just thought I'd go through those with you and see which ones you're most interested in seeing first and because all of these are things that I'm thinking would be good content for like a separate spinning video because maybe I haven't done something quite like this before or for a long time so just wondering what your thoughts are and what you would like to see first so core spinning would you guys like to see a video on core spinning? Bearing in mind that I'm very new at it and I'm not great at it either. So there's that. Um, I'd be learning whilst sharing my progress with you. The um, other one is I picked up these two bundles of fibre from um, Shunkley's Fibre Studio. They are based out of the UK and this both are the same colourway. So this is blended top, merino silk, comb top, um, 70% merino, 30% silk, and this is in the tapestry colorway. These beautiful greens and purples. Very much my colors. And then it's the same fiber, but in a bat form. The greens and also the tapestry colorway. Same fiber, 70-30 merino um, silk. And so my plan, merino tussle silk. And this one just says silk. Anyway, so my plan, was to um, spin these and ply them like as two plies separately to see the differences between um, a back preparation versus a blended top preparation uh, where the colors are obviously more separated than they are in the bat. So that's one option that I, I definitely want to do a video on this. It's just whether or not this is something you want to see now versus later. Um, and finally, I have these two lovely braids from where is it? There we go. From um, Spin City UK. And my plan with this was always to do like a, a fractal with this, which I think would be so pretty. They are both um, the same, same braid essentially. It's a merino tensile blend. And uh, yeah, so one would be spun end to end without any, uh, without doing anything with it. And the other one will be stripped down into as many strips as possible. And, um, spun so it'd be spun as a fractal essentially 
uh, would you rather see a video on that first or the bat and braid or the core spun so it's fractal bat and braid or core spun those are my next upcoming spinning plans so i'd love to hear your thoughts if there's any in particular that you'd like to see first um just let me know this one i will definitely be doing a video about um the core spun if i don't do one now i will do a core spun video at some point in the future and i have done a couple of fractal spinning vlogs in the past so i'm not sure whether this is just something that's been done and you're not that interested in seeing anymore or if you're interested in seeing another version of it i'm not entirely sure how i'm going to prep this fractal whether i'm going to use the blending board at all or not um i'm leaning towards yes using the blending board a little bit for this one so that could be interesting if you're interested in that but um but yeah just generally let me know what your thoughts are okay i think i'm gonna leave it there for this one i'm pretty sure i've covered all of the spinning content that i have to catch you guys up on it was um a lot today or this time because it's been a few weeks since i last checked in with you and uh thank you so much for watching and yeah i hope you have a great time i'll be back hopefully fairly soon with another video and i'll catch up with you guys soon all right take care bye